Welcome everyone to today's uh, OPART Hygiene webinar. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to listen in, uh, whether it's uh, early in the morning or, or late at night for you. Uh, my name is Joel Opart. Um, uh, I'm joining you from Germany today and I'll be guiding you through this webinar uh, that takes a look at uh, the latest product release that we have at our organization, the OPART Hygiene uh, Washroom Monitoring System. Um, let's take a look at the agenda. So um, first up, I'll be giving you a very condensed introduction to who we are as an organization. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with us, and then I'll give uh, a brief introduction to our new software product and what our motivations were behind creating this solution. And uh, then I'll hand over to uh, an actual expert, <laughs> Josh Gertz, our OWMS product manager uh, and Canadian software development manager. Josh is based out of our facility in Beansville, Ontario. He brings years of practical experience in network administration, web development, and uh, software engineering. Josh will take you through the core functions of both the web portal and mobile app and help you understand what those functions can do to improve your business. Then finally, uh, we'll conclude with a question and answer period. If at any point in time you have a question, uh, please use your GoToMeeting control panel and enter your question into the questions section. And uh, if you don't see an option for that, then uh, press the big uh, orange or red, whatever color that is, arrow and um, expand the control panel. If you're still having issues at that point, maybe just send us an email. We'll see if we, if we find it and, and can answer it during the webinar or, or we'll reach out to you afterwards. So let's get started. Okay, so who is Opart Hygiene? Uh, it was founded in 1962 by uh, a gentleman named Hermann Opart, a young German engineer at the time. Uh, he was working out of his garage where he invented at the time a, um, a dispenser that um, turned into the number one dispenser in the German, Swiss, and Austrian healthcare facilities. Um, and it stayed that way for the last 50 years or so. Um, his dispenser was the first to reliably dispense uh, alcohol-based hand rubs as they were first coming into the market um, and did so using a hygienic stainless steel lever, um, you know, the one that you uh, activate with your elbow um, and used upwards instead of downward dispensing. And in effect, these spread like wildfire due to, due to their reputation for, for reliability. Um, then very quickly, the company expanded from Germany to open up manufacturing locations in Belgium, then Ireland, Canada, Switzerland, and the Philippines. And then this year, we're opening up a facility in Armenia as well. Um, each location has its own specialization, like stainless steel production in Germany, high volume pump production in Canada, and um, plastic dispenser manufacturing in the Philippines. Um, we currently have around 700 Oport employees and growing quickly. Um, mostly due to the COVID-19 situation. Um, but what we're most proud of, of course, is the uh, large investment we make in IP um, and R&D. Um, you know, more than 10% of our workforce is involved in R&D. Um, we have 400 patents in the dispensing space. Um, and so since Herman founded the company kind of on engineering principles, we've always stayed true to our roots uh, by perpetually focusing on customer driven innovation and reliability. So all of these innovations are based around uh, one single framework. Uh, our mission is to break the chain of infection. Uh, we don't produce chemicals like soap and sanitizers. Um, usually those uh, manufacturers are our partners. So anything that falls into the spectrum of hardware and software that can help users prevent um, um, acquiring infections, that's what we spend our time developing. So during the coronavirus pandemic, that was particularly uh, relevant as we believe that our products are vital tools to reduce the need for treatment while we wait for a vaccine. So the solutions that we're talking today also present, uh, represent our latest thinking on what products are necessary to prevent infections and make our customers' lives easier in the 21st century. So um, what do we 
need in order to continue to pre protect ourselves effectively against infections while making our lives easier. Um, we think that users expect and need a bundle of intelligent solutions we call um, OPART intelligent solutions um, or OIS. Um, this suite of products combines smart devices, a really robust um, IoT core, and user-friendly software. You can see on the on the diagram there the way that kind of works. You know, the devices feed into the cloud that we have, which uh, the data is stored in Germany, always encrypted, very safe, and then distribute distributes it into these uh, different applications. So until recently, the bundle only consisted of the Ingomon Eurobottle systems um, and the OHMS system meant for healthcare systems. So that's the dispenser kind of in the middle there with the hygienic lever uh, leading to the uh, left there um, with OHMS, um, that software piece. Um, here, we're currently the European market leader for um, a system that focuses on hand hygiene compliance exclusively. We also offer third-party connections to other software and databases that people might need by making use of our REST API connection from our IoT core. But with the launching of OWMS and the impending launch of a smart refillable and cartridge series, we feel that we now have a very lucrative bundle of smart products that can improve hygiene in nearly every setting. But let's take a look at what motivations were behind our development of OWMS. So we developed OWMS to address the issues surrounding cleanliness standards, which impacts customers' satisfaction, cost, and productivity, um, combined with the undertrained and time-constrained cleaning staff that we generally see in the industry. Our new software adds simplified, automated structures to cleaning process to achieve all of these. But under threat of COVID-19, we also see that a myriad of institutions outside of the healthcare sector are struggling to meet the most basic hygiene needs. In a time where everyone washes, disinfects their hands, um, how can they guarantee that product is always available? Washrooms always have to be stocked in order to make sure that guests can clean and dry their hands properly. To add on to that, we have the looming threat of government legislation of hygiene standards in public areas, in private businesses, um, and that also presents the problem of documentation. So that's why we now see compliance kind of as that third pillar here by also assuring that product is always available um, and that the processes behind there are verified and documented. So what is the OPAR washer monitoring system? In essence, it's the digitalization of facility management by harnessing device data, which integrates into workflow software. The smart modules we build into our dispensers, some of our, which are retrofitable with this technology, typically report activations, which send out the dispenser ID and timestamp for the activation, um, dosage amount, the fill levels of products, and battery status. With OWMS, um, facility managers or hygiene specialists can now use this data to uh, automatically deploy cleaning teams according to actual needs and predefined processes, um, which many of, uh, of which go far beyond simple refilling of dispensers. So um, these are controlled and set up through a web portal for admin users or uh, facility managers where they maintain a complete overview and control of their resources. The service teams are then equipped with a mobile application on either Android or iOS, where they're assigned their tasks, which they complete successively. But um, that's a bit of an intro. Obviously, the system is incredibly powerful. Um, you know, we've partnered with facility apps here as well, if you need some extended functionality that we can integrate uh, from them as well. Um, but to take a look, uh, a little bit more of a detailed look at what exactly the software does, I'll turn it over to the expert, Joshua Gertz. Thank you, Joel. Um, that was a great uh, overview and uh, intro into our OWMS software. Um, I have the privilege today to uh, get to show you guys the live software and actually go through um, the web app. Um, we're not going to go through the mobile app today. Um, just uh, for convenience sake, but uh, we will we'll discuss some of the 
real optimizations that we get um, in the workflows uh, using the mobile app. So let's jump right into the website. So the starting view here that I'm showing you is the elements overview. What this page uh, allows you to do is take a look at the status of your devices in the in the world. Um, I have this filtered to just the webinar devices. Uh, we like to, at OPART, whenever we're giving webinars, not show real devices um, just for privacy sake. Um, so everything here is just sort of auto-generated um, uh, fake things just, just to uh, show off how the software works. So here you have um, three webinar devices. Webinar 02, it's an HSU, so a paper towel dispenser. Um, you can get a lot of great information at a glance here. So you can see where it's located, um, when the last time you received sensor data, what that data was, and um, get a nice little green icon here uh, for a full dispenser. If this were lower um, or not quite as full, you might see a yellow uh, threshold here. Um, and if it's down by empty, uh, you would see red. What's awesome about this is all of this is configurable to your own needs. So again, very easy to get a quick overview of individual devices and what their statuses are. Um, so um, one of the best features, in my opinion, um, of OWMS is our plugin system, which I'll get to in a minute. But what we're able to do is based off the data sent um, from these devices, auto, uh, sorry, automate um, your workflows. So what we can do is generate tasks uh, to very specific groups of people um, based on the data that's coming into your system. So let's take a look at the tasks that are generated. So here we have um, a task that we generated a little while ago. Um, it's back on June 24th. But you can see here, um, it's called Refill TRU. So that's a toilet paper dispenser that's got empty. And we have a plugin that listens for data that um, is relevant to toilet paper dispensers and will automatically create this task if they hit um, a certain low level. Again, all of this is configurable and I'll show you these plugins um, in a moment. One of the other really powerful things about um, OWMS is the uh, grouping and the structure uh, behind the, the data uh, that you're, you're looking at. Um, if you take a look at organization, we have regions. Regions are the first sort of grouping of data. Um, it's a really powerful tool for separating out different devices into different um, areas. So at OPART, as Joel mentioned, we have plants all over the world. So you can see here we have OPART own locations um, and we have six different dots below that. You can see as I hover um, each individual site. So you can click here and get a full view of that. You can see here we have Belgium, Canada, Germany, Philippines, Ireland, and Switzerland. The reason for this is as we're sending out um, tasks and assigning tasks to people, we don't want a, a task for a device in Belgium to be assigned to somebody in Canada. That's not very helpful to uh, uh, to anybody involved. So um, what we do is we have these great breakups of the data that you can associate your devices to. And so the, the correct people get associated with the correct devices and um, really automates that, that assignment piece for you. Uh, very powerful capabilities. Uh, here, regions are just the first grouping. We also have within a region sites, um, and then sites are broken down into floor plans and so on and so forth. You can get down to individual rooms um, and exact placements for devices in those rooms so that there's no question about where a device is. Um, staff can go find that, know exactly where it's been placed, which is great. Another grouping is companies. So if you have, let's say, two sites um, that have a, you know, a company that covers both of those um, or two companies that cover both uh, regions, you can still group them together by um, company. And so if you have, you know, several companies in one area, you can still assign to staff just for those companies uh, based on however you'd like to group your data. Again, a very powerful feature of OWMS. Uh, while we're here, let's very quickly, you can see push messaging. Um, one of the great features of this is we can send uh, 
push messages, obviously a lot of test uh, push messages going out recently, um, to, to your uh, staff devices. So this will actually show up on a, an Android or iOS device that's logged into the app. Uh, the message just shows up at the top, just like any normal message that you get on your phone. And uh, again, this is a great way to quickly communicate um, uh, information to, to however, uh, to whatever group of people you need. So again, that can be grouped by region, site, company, floor plan, however um, you already organize your, your staff, you can organize them uh, the same way in the system. So your real life workflows get automated uh, very quickly and easily. Let's take a look at the plugins because I think, again, that's one of the most powerful pieces to this. Um, so you can see here we have different plugins. We have TRU Empty, that was the one um, that was firing when we saw the task earlier. When a toilet paper dispenser is close to empty, um, this will fire a, a task to fill that uh, TRU up. Um, but we also have things like KX Low Battery. So if you have a KX dispenser that's hit a certain low voltage, uh, we can send a task to have that battery replaced. Um, you can see here, we don't have that happen very often because our devices are built specifically with battery usage in mind um, so that we, we have very long times before replacing batteries. But um, in this case, uh, it's shown by no events having happened. However, uh, just recently we added the ability to use these same plugins to close tasks as well, which is a really, really powerful feature. So uh, we have a, a plugin that can automatically um, create a task when a device is empty. Well, now we have the ability to automatically close a task once it's been refilled. This way, the only piece that a staff member in the field needs to uh, receive is a notification that that device needs to be um, refilled. And so going and refilling that automatically closes that task, which is a really great feature. So they just need to know that it needs to be done. They can go and do it and the whole thing is documented um, in the background for them. They don't have to go into an app and automatically, or sorry, manually swipe uh, or say that a device has been refilled. It will, all, we already have that information, so why not automate that as well? Um, however, we can still, you know, if this um, doesn't always work or maybe uh, the task isn't been, um, uh, doesn't have a, an associated close plugin, they can still do that manually. So I'll show you quickly here in planning and view status labels. One thing that's really cool about the system is you can change based on the way that you swipe in the app, and we'll show you that um, just in a minute. Um, which way you're swiping can change the status to however, to whatever status you want it to be. So here we just have some, some um, uh, demo statuses. Um, some of these are in Dutch, which is fine. Um, but you can see here, so we can set it to status done by swiping right, or we can set it to status done refilled by swiping left. And again, it's a very quick and easy way for um, your staff to set the status of tasks. So you can have a list of them and very quickly just swipe left, swipe right, um, and set the statuses however you need. So for example, you might have a, a canceled status that says, um, I don't have the, the filling good I need to fill this, or, um, uh, any other status that it's you already used, you can put in here, um, and again, very quickly and easily have your staff set those statuses just by swiping on the task. Let's take a, oh, sorry, before I get into that, I wanted to take you through our business intelligence module as well. So this is a very capable um, piece of software that we're using to um, try and predict when uh, tasks will be closed. So you can see here under dispenser activations, this will load in just a second here. So we can get some very powerful data at a glance. Here we have um, the number of dispenser activations per day. So this just gives us an overall count of the number of raw times that a device has been used. Um, so here we have in April, you know, well over 900 events, so that's very low, but this is a demo environment. So it's only occasional usage. Uh, we can get very quick, um, great information at a glance. That's also uh, textual. So you can change um, the date range you're looking at, what sensor, or you can look at a specific floor or site, whatever you need um, to really empower you. And all of this is customizable as well. But 
looking here at the response time, one thing that we track in this you know, task creation and task closure is that, that time between, so that we know how long it takes from the device getting emptied to the device getting filled, and we can start using this as a predictive model. And you can start saying, well, I need my plug-in to fire at a higher percentage because the response time is, is longer than the amount of time it takes to empty the last, say, 10%. So you have a device that says, I'm empty at 10%, um, but it's taking longer than um, it, the time it takes to empty that 10% to fill it up, and so you end up with devices at zero. Um, in order to avoid this, what you can use is this screen to say, okay, well, our average response time is 25 minutes, and we need that to be, we need the dispenser to notify us at 15% in order to um, ensure that the device never gets down to zero and is always at, uh, uh, always has some filling good in it. So jumping back into the presentation here, show you the, the swiping screens. So here you can see um, we have a task on the right, and as you swipe in either direction, you get these nice big colors that tell us, again, these are all customizable, that tell us what the actual status is. So on the, the far left, we can say, uh, cancel, this didn't work, or the device isn't found, or uh, you know any other number of problems that can occur. But um, in the more likely sense, in the middle, um, if you swipe to the right there, you can see status is done. Um, we've completed that. Uh, again, very quickly, leaves uh, as little uh, need to manage the tasks within the app. Um, the idea for the, the app is to notify and organize the task, but it's not really meant you know, for a lot of overhead for staff to go in and, and manage tasks and be changing settings and things like that. It's meant very quickly to uh, enable staff to update the status without um, without having to go through a lot of menus or anything like that. It's just a nice swipe, which is very powerful. Um, I think that's everything I have for the uh, live demo here. So I'm gonna pass things back over to Joel. If anybody has any questions, please again, pop them into the, the question sections of the, the uh, go-to webinar and uh, I will answer them at the end. Great, thank you very much for, for that, Josh. So um, maybe let's recap what exactly these features you discussed do for our listeners. So we've talked a lot about productivity increases, cost savings, satisfaction, and workflows, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what is important is that this software has a lot of effects that are realized by addressing some immediate needs through the software that you'll have it right away on your on your bucket list and those then also translating to more downstream benefits so we talked about the fact that always having stocked toilet paper soap sanitizer and paper towels leads to higher guest satisfaction i mean that's obvious but you know the owms system can help with this process which has been proven to reflect very positively on businesses you know in restaurants for example uh, a clean bathroom actually results in repeat business because the idea of hygiene there is so important. You know, we have an article up there. There's there's a study behind this. Um, I, I think it's also fairly intuitive um, for everyone to understand this concept. But what we've also noticed is that this also has a downstream benefit of having more motivated employees because they see the fruits of their labor. They see the situation improving and their work is also documented for everyone to see. Um, the same also goes for solving the immediate need of adhering to hygiene regulations now in COVID-19, and as they'll probably be expanded down the line after this pandemic, as everyone sees this threat growing. Well, the downstream benefit of setting up a hygiene station and ensuring it always has sanitizer, as is required by some regulatory bodies, is that you have higher compliance because product is always present. In an office, for example, that results in less sick days from your employees. It's a net benefit again. Finally, we see the same effect for the first step where the idea uh, of trying to, uh, to time refill cycles in order to decrease consumption costs also has a downstream benefit. The software will help you identify how those gains can be made, but this also results in higher productivity of your workforce. Maybe overall, this exercise will also mean that you have, you, you've actually overstaffed um, at, at a current facility and can maybe divert those resources into other directions or other projects that you might have. 
So now that we've piqued your interest in the system, you might be wondering what the process is to getting this system installed. So luckily, the setup process is actually quite straightforward and, and really easy. I mean, all you need to do is buy the hardware and have Wi-Fi on site, uh, and your job is pretty much done. If those things exist and you don't need any, uh, if those things exist, you don't need any additional infrastructure um, or to install any software. Your biggest hurdle is basically just contacting, uh, contacting us and telling us you're interested. So uh, luckily, uh, as you see on your screen, there's an abundance of options here. You can email us at training at opart.com. I mean, you've done that essentially already in signing up for this webinar. So that's us in the marketing department. Um, uh, we're happy to, to direct you in, in, in an appropriate direction to um, figure out um, how you can get this software. And you know, that, that, that's for, for both cases, you know, OPART doesn't have, you know, end, much end user contact. We work with partners, things like that. If you're a partner, please contact us. If you're an end user, contact us as well. We have lots of partners around the world who can get you set up with this software as well and, and, and be your local contact. So um, you can also find uh, lots of information on our website, including contact emails. Um, and may, or maybe you can read up on some device or device offerings and figure out you know what's what's attractive for your situation. Um, and you also have the option of reaching out to customer care to our customer care department. You know normally they're very very responsive and very helpful, but I, I would maybe recommend that right now during the COVID nineteen pandemic they're very focused on uh, a few other topics right now and are a little bit more difficult to get a hold of. So. Um, there's also one more option that I think that's not listed here. That's that's probably the best way to get in contact with us right now uh, is OWMS at opart.com. Shoot an email um, in that direction and um, that goes directly to the commercial team responsible for OWMS. And then once you've gotten in touch with us, um, you know, we'll get you the devices and then we'll help uh, you set up your environment and give you the basic training you need to get started on the software. And you know that, of course, that becomes an iterative process. You know, as long as you have the software, you'll have great support um, and and be able to have training and 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 improvement to the to the process as you go along. But you know, it's a it's a really quick and easy process for you, uh, provided you have you have Wi-Fi and and our hardware. So um, obviously, we didn't talk much about the, the hardware itself. You know, we have um, uh, our new Zontral Plus series with um, smart devices or smart modules inside being launched in Q3 2020. Um, we'll have more information on that series, um, you know, at launch date. But maybe as a as a first teaser now that that's coming down the line, that'll have the full gamut of you know paper towel dispensers, um, you know waste bins. Uh, soap and disinfectant dispensers, everything you need to equip a full washroom and any public areas. Um, then, of course, we have the Ingoman Smart Nose available right now. Um, that's a really great uh, device, especially for hygiene stations in front um, of businesses as a point of care in healthcare. Um, and then the KX Smart, if you're looking for a, a cartridge solution, um, that's also available in Q3 2020. Um, we actually think probably more like August 2020 to be to be a little bit more specific. Um, um, so we have a cartridge solution there, which is you know um, important for some markets. We have a Euro bottle solution and we have a refillable solution there. So from a soap dispenser and disinfectant dispenser perspective, you kind of have the three refill types um, bundled there in that offering. And of course, you know we're very happy to announce that OWMS is officially being launched July 1st. Um, so that's Wednesday. So, um, you know, get that order in and, and we'll get you set up as soon as possible. Um, in general, to stay up to date with OPART, you, you know, we have a, a few different uh, methods of communication or, or of information flow. Um, the, uh, the webinar that you're part of, obviously there's a whole bunch more coming, uh, especially those devices we just mentioned. There's some that um, we've already done, and then there's some that we will do in the coming months. Uh, for the for the past webinars, you can find them on our YouTube channel as well as as some nice advertising videos and some nice installation videos. Anything you might need, uh, lots of content going up there right now. 
and then we have our monthly newsletter where we you know we highlight some articles that we're posting on our blog news at news.opart.com and uh, new product launches and you know scientific articles on hand hygiene that might be relevant you know it's a great little resource to figure out what's going on at opar and what's going on in the world of hand hygiene and then finally we also have some uh, tuv um, certified uh, hygiene courses that we also offer um, you can email training at opart.com uh, as well to to participate in those those you get a nice certificate in the end from a third party um, that's internationally recognized for its high standards so that concludes today's webinar so um, i think we were very quick through that i probably uh, should have um, you know outlined that to, to begin with but um, i think that's a nice a condensed overview of what the software does. I think to understand, you know, the, the full power behind this software, I think uh, scheduling a session with, with our commercial team might be appropriate. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of customization available. And like we said before, there's API connections that can be done to existing software you might have. But um, yeah, so we'll jump into the, to, to the Q and A session here. Um, but if you have more questions, you know, feel free to email us afterwards and um, we'll see what, what, what we can do and, and maybe book an appointment to discuss this as well. So the first question I, I uh, see here, uh, Josh, probably uh, best directed towards you is uh, security. I think we touched on it briefly, uh, but maybe you can just elaborate a little bit on, on uh, how seriously we take uh, security of, of information with our uh, software and hardware suite. Absolutely, thanks, Joel. That's a good. Uh, good question. Um, as far as security and privacy go, it's it's of the utmost importance to Opart Hygiene. Um, your device data is encrypted um, in transfer every piece, um, every step along the way, so that no prying eyes can can see into your data. Um, and as I showed with the the structure in in OWMS and the way you're able to group different objects, um, the same can be done with user rights and permissions. So once the data gets encrypted and stored in our in our secure IoT core, um, and again transferred uh, and encrypted to um, OWMS, uh, from there it's even you know more granular than uh, than you can imagine. You can assign individual users to individual dispensers or however you see best to break up your data so that um, you can ensure that only the people logging in um, can see only the data that uh, you want them to have. So both from the privacy and security point of view, we use the latest and greatest encryption um, available to keep your data secure, um, but we also want to make sure that you have the tools to um, ensure that data is uh, private as as necessary within the system itself. Great, thanks for that, Josh. Um, I think one more question I can just throw right at you here again is just on battery life of our devices. I know you're a software guy, but maybe maybe you have a good answer there. Yeah, so uh, at our, the I, I spend more time um, in any given week talking about our battery life than. Uh, than almost any other subject. We really focus on that. With the Ingleman, it's uh, the Ingleman Plus, um, uh, we can achieve uh, five plus years of battery life. In those um, other devices, um, it really depends more on the Wi Fi signal strength and how long that device needs to be online and sending data. Um, the stronger the Wi Fi connection, the less time it takes to do that. Um, and so the less time the device needs to be sort of on and working, the less battery usage obviously. So um, we can um, anticipate two plus years of um, battery life in um, most of our devices in the Santrell line. Um, it really is device specific and again really focus on that Wi-Fi connection but um, uh, we're, we're definitely talking years not not months or, or weeks um, when it comes to OPART devices which is a great thing. Um, and uh, the devices that aren't you know in the five plus range um, they're only limited. They're the D cell battery, so um, it, it's a quick and easy change, and uh, um, again, should only happen once every two years or so. 
Okay, great. Um, I think we're getting the, uh, the, 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 the classic question as well about pricing. Uh, I think I'll just, just handle that for a second. So pricing, I think we need to talk about on a kind of a case by case basis, you know, uh, um, a small facility is different than, you know, a Volkswagen or, or something like that. So um, what we would say is, you know, you have uh, device costs, um, and then you have, uh, you know, monthly data costs and you have, you know, licensee costs that kind of are, are the three bundles. It's not an exorbitant cost by any means, but those are the kind of three bundles you're looking at. And um, then if you're getting an API connection, only the first two to apply. Um, and I guess I'll just answer the other question that's just come in is um, on um, what um, other software that we've connected to before. Um, we have uh, a, f a few different uh, solutions we've done in the past here, but we should talk about specifically which uh, which partner you're looking for in this case, um, and we can go from there. But in general, you know, we when we're we're, we're looking at pricing, you have the initial investment into the actual uh, device. Sometimes we can also do a nice bundle for you so that it's a it's a set monthly fee the whole way through, and you don't have to pay attention to. Um, monthly device fees and user license fees and all those kind of things, but really it is it is a it is a uh, you know a custom fit for each type of situation that we're looking at here. Although we do have some standardized pricing, um, you know it might be more confusing than than helpful at this point because it seems that that every si uh, situation in terms of smart has its you know its own unique application and and circumstances at this point. So. Um, I don't see any other questions at this point, um, but again, like I said, reach out to us at training at opart.com, at owms at opart.com, and uh, we're happy to book a live demo. We're happy to, to, to send you some samples and, and to get you started as, as soon as possible. Thank you very much, and have a great morning or afternoon, wherever you might be. Thanks very much.